Live from the station that's in your corner, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. Good Saturday morning. I'm Rochelle Aline. Here's a look at what we're working on this morning. Ready to book your next cruise? Well, not so fast. Why cruise lines are considering skipping Florida sports altogether. Spending money to make money. The big plan Southwest Florida leaders have for a local waterfront park. And put down the scissors and trimmers, all right? Salons have been reopened, but they say some customers still aren't ready to return. How they're hoping to bring you back inside. Now, before we get to today's news, Mother's Day weekend is this weekend. So let's check with, in with Lauren Petrelli to find out if brunch outside with mom should be your weekend plans or if you should have a backup. Lauren, what are we looking at? It's not bad, I okay, have to good. tell you, but today, probably a better day to eat outside tomorrow. That humidity starts to uptick just a little bit. Current temperatures can't complain too much. 67 over at Fort Myers Page Field, 66 over at RSW, 68 in Naples with clear skies. Clear skies for most of us, you could see Live radar sweeping across nice and clear, not just for us, but also for pretty much the entire state. And we are expecting to remain nice and clear, not just for today, but also for your Sunday. Our rain chances remain very low. Uh, we do have a very minimal chance for an inland stray shower. That would be tomorrow, but no reason to cancel those Mother's Day plans. All right, so for today, mostly sunny, still going to be hot though with a high maxing out around 90 degrees. Don't depend on that breeze to cool you down too much with the wind coming out of the north and northeast anywhere between 5 and 10 miles per hour. More about your Mother's Day forecast and our next chance for rain coming up in your full forecast in less than 10 minutes. All right, thanks, Lauren. This morning, a five-year-old child is fighting for their life after being shot in a Clewiston parking lot, and their four-year-old sibling was also shot and has died. This all happened around 3 o'clock Friday afternoon in a parking lot off of Burner Road. The parents brought the children to the hospital, and sadly, the four-year-old was pronounced dead, and the five-year-old was airlifted to a trauma center in critical condition. Hendry County Sheriff Steve Whitten says they don't have an active suspect right now. This may be an accidental shooting, uh, but we're also treating it like a homicide until we can uh, say otherwise. Fox 4 asked Whitten if the parents could be suspects, and he says they have not ruled that out just yet. The parents are currently being interviewed. A Clewiston principal who paddled a student has been cleared of any potential criminal charges. A review by the state attorney's office shows the child's mother consented to the discipline and was present for it. According to the principal, the mother was called after the child damaged school property. The report goes on to say the mother told staff her daughter was also damaging things at home and she was afraid to spank the child because she threatened to call police. That report also states that the mother has requested the school staff to spank her child. Florida is one of 19 states in which corporal punishment is allowed. Crews have started work to clear the wreckage of a plane that crashed just feet from the Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in LaBelle Thursday. Investigators with the Federal Aviation Administration and the National Transportation Safety Board are working to determine the cause of that crash. The pastor of the church says the building was not damaged and that she's just thankful it wasn't worse. If it had hit the columbarium, I don't know what would have happened. And of course, if it had hit the church, it would have been horrendous. But uh, by the grace of God, it's right in the middle. One man was killed in that crash. Another was taken to the hospital. The Hendry County Sheriff's Office has not yet released their names. And the pastor says she plans to construct a memorial to the man who died. All right, fuel isn't cheap, and that's why if you find hundreds of gallons of that stuff abandoned, it could fuel suspicion. Just after midnight Thursday night, the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office found an abandoned silver van parked at the Placida boat ramp at the Boca Grande Causeway. Inside that van was about 20 15-gallon drums of fuel, and it's left many questioning the motive. If they see something suspicious at a gas station, you know, uh, a truck, staying there a, a long time getting fuel you know the chances are they're not filling up a regular fuel tank but they're filling a bladder in the back of that truck you know just you know be aware of it and you know report it to somebody and detectives are continuing to investigate. According to Zalisco, the van is registered to Florida West International Airlines in Miami. It was previously registered to Florida Advertising and Marketing Corps with the same Miami address. 
Many people in Florida are finally looking forward to going on a cruise again as soon as this summer, but a move to ban vaccine passports in our state have some cruise lines questioning if they'll operate in Florida at all. Mary O'Connell explains what the impact could mean for people ready to set sail. Together we've been on, I think, 12 cruises. Um, and I've been on almost 20 at this point. Alyssa Griffin is a local travel vlogger who's anxiously waiting to cruise again. So we will book probably the first cruise out of the U.S., wherever it is. Last week, the CDC clarified for cruise lines, saying ships can bypass test cruises and go directly to open water sailing with passengers if they can attest 98% of its crew and 95% of its passengers are fully vaccinated. But now there could be a potential ripple in the water for the cruise industry in Florida. But under no circumstances will the state be asking you to show proof of vaccination. That's what the governor said back in March and earlier this week he signed a bill to ban vaccine passports, cementing an executive order blocking any business or government entity from requiring proof of a COVID-19 vaccination. On a call yesterday, the Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings president and CEO was asked how they plan to deal with this. He said legally lawyers believe federal law applies and not state law. However, he also said if they can't operate in Florida for whatever reason, then there are other states they do operate from, and they can operate from the Caribbean for ships that otherwise would have gone to Florida. Obviously, there are thousands of employees that work on the ships themselves, but you have the people that work in the port, um, in the cruise terminal, you have parking, you have um, security, so all of those jobs are also impacted. Griffin hopes the CDC and governor can work it out. Even still, she says she's ready to set sail as soon as she can. I get super emotional, so I'll probably cry. <laughs> it's just we, we cannot wait. So whether it's going to be sailing out of Florida or from another island, we're ready. And Port Tampa Bay released a statement that read in part, quote, Port Tampa Bay is anxious to resume sailings and continues to work closely with our cruise line partners to follow CDC guidelines. They also said they're ready to do their part to ensure passenger safety and appreciated the governor's support of the cruise industry. The governor's office has not yet responded to the comments made by Norwegian Cruise Lines. An American advisor to the World Health Organization says the coronavirus origins can be found with China's cooperation. Jamie Metzl is part of a group of 20 scientists calling for a full investigation of all COVID-19 origin theories, including a possible lab-related incident. He has criticized China for doing things like destroying records and biological samples, which he says are important to a thorough investigation. Recently, a report came out in March that hasn't offered any concrete evidence that the virus was lab born. It showed that a lab release of the virus was, quote, extremely unlikely. All right, more money is coming into Fort Myers. The recently approved changes to Centennial Park are expected to bring more locals and tourists to the area. The city's former mayor says when renovations are all done, the downtown area could see a boost in revenue upwards of half a million dollars every year. Fox 4's Rachel Lloyd has a story beginning with the current mayor. Fort Myers Mayor Kevin Anderson calls the upgrade to Centennial Park long overdue. That park I believe is about 40 years old so it was ready for an upgrade. So we're going to have, it's going to be like having a brand new park. During a five hour meeting, council approved a $350,000 renovation to the park's amphitheater Monday night. The project will include new playground equipment for children with disabilities, storm drainage and utility systems. Mayor Anderson says pretty soon the park will turn into a money maker too. Uh, by the end of the year, I believe we'll have a, the band show where there can be community events held in the park. There can be concerts. Uh, all, all kinds of things can occur down there now. But not everyone was on board. Council members Fred Burson and Liston Boucher said the language in the agenda for the overall $3.5 million project was confusing. I haven't seen how it's going to be spent. The city's former mayor, Randy Henderson, who sat where they're sitting when this conversation started years ago, explained the council had already discussed these items before and were simply ratifying the city's $350,000 contribution to the amphitheater. He said it takes money to make money, pointing to other cities that have invested in their waterfront properties. We're very fortunate to 
have learned from other cities a great deal about how to do that. The area along the Hillsborough River downtown Tampa got an $11 million makeover in 2015 with a two and a half mile river walk, a water taxi and a gourmet food court. Henderson says Fort Myers recently approved investments could pay off just like they did in Tampa. The economic impact from the hotel and the modernization of the Clusa Sound uh, Convention Center will generate enormous revenue, discretionary revenue, back to the city uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 600 to a million dollars a year. That's factoring in revenue generated from the county's bed tax and ticketed events at the park like concerts. In Fort Myers, Rachel Lloyd, Fox 4. And Mayor Anderson also pointed out that last year the city's assessed property value grew by 6.9%. That was the greatest increase throughout Lee County. He says developing areas like Centennial Park will continue to push property values higher. And like Tampa, he's also looking into bringing a water taxi to the Fort Myers Riverfront. One Southwest Florida family is taking their vacation vibes all the way to the bank. How they reinvented their lives to make sure they're spending every day doing what they love. All right, Southwest Florida, today's going to be another hot one with temperatures in the mid 80s by about noon. Plenty of sunshine, but here's the kicker, less humidity. We'll talk more about that and your rain chances for Mother's Day coming up in your full forecast. You're watching Fox 4 Morning News. Live like this. Welcome back. Time now is 614 AM. You're taking a live look at Naples Pier, one of my favorite views in all of Southwest Florida. You can see just a beautiful start to this Saturday morning, and Lauren will be back later on to tell us if it's going to stay that way the rest of this weekend. As Southwest Florida rebounds from the pandemic, we want to take some time to introduce you to a person who has reinvented their life to start a new business. And as Fox 4's Chris Shaw shows you, their goal is to make that relaxed feeling you have on vacation last all the time. There are times when you start a new business when it seems like the water moving things along is agonizingly slow. And then there are other times when it feels like the tide changes so quickly you can't keep up. So as these two men push off on their adventure together, their goal is just to relax and enjoy the ride. The water was like a magnet to us and we basically were drawn towards it. It's always been that way for Blake Schwinn and his son Taylor. What is it about the water that, that attracted you? Uh, it's gotta be, the, I mean, the sea life and the, how there's an abundance of different fish. You see where they used to live in Missouri, there's nothing like this. And that magnet that drew them to Florida for vacation every year. I love the Gulf. Eventually led Blake to decide to just move here. And Taylor was right behind him. If he would have moved to Alaska instead of Southwest Florida, would you have moved there? I believe so. Yeah, oh, I, I, honestly, I honestly think so. Uh, you know, uh, that's how close we are. So they have a bond and a love of the water, and they both thought the next step was a no-brainer. We were driving by a uh, boat reseller, and the boat reseller had a few boats in his lot, so told my son, I said, let's go in there and see what he's got. And both of us were just like, oh my gosh, this could be it. They weren't just looking at a boat, they saw a new path forward. The boat needed fixed up, but when you can see something that's not all put together already and you can envision it, that's I think when we knew. They knew this could be a business, so they bought the boat and spent money to fix it up. And Taylor went to school to become a captain for their new charter business. For him, it's a career change, of course, and for Blake, it's a way to eventually sail into retirement. How do you feel about the risk here? There's always a risk in business. To us, the risk is not doing it. What do you mean? If we weren't doing this, then we would trudge along our way. Our kids would basically, you know, find some, you know, type of uh, job or career, and we would then have to take time away from that to come on vacation as opposed to living in vacation. That's the mindset. It's why they call the business Chillax Custom Charters. Chillax because that's the way they feel on the water and custom because they plan to offer a wide range of services to make each charter unique. Does it mean more do you think because it's a family business? It does. I think it does and I, I mean I think we you know 
definitely stand out a little bit because of how close we are and how, how we want it to stay a family business. Who knows where the waves will take them, but as long as they have each other and the water, they're right where they want to be. There's been, I think, maybe you know, a couple times where we've been like, this is this might be a little bit more than we, we expected, but you know, you, you go out that next day on the water, you're like, okay, this is why I'm doing it, you know? So I don't see anything that could possibly stop us in our tracks. It's the kind of story you can't help but smile at. If you're also looking to rebound and looking for a job, Kentucky Fried Chicken says it needs thousands more workers. The fried chicken chain wants to hire 20,000 people to fill positions at its restaurants across the country. KFC says it has seen a growth in sales as more people opt for the convenience of drive through carry out and delivery. The open positions will be both full time and part time. The Edison Mall in Fort Myers is hosting a job fair on Saturday, May 22nd from 1 to 4 p.m. If you're interested in retail, they're looking to hire part time and full time associates. On site interviews will also be available for a full list of the stores that will be at the job fair. You can head to our website foxfornow.com. And remember, if your business or company is hiring, you can let us know so we can let our viewers know. You can fill out our web form or email us at news at Fox com. All right, Lauren, we saw that gorgeous view of Naples Pier earlier. Great start to the day. You know I love that shot. Question is, <laughs> is it going to stay that gorgeous all day? Uh, yes. yes. So the way, if you, you guys didn't get a chance to hear Rochelle, but she was like, can I teleport there already? And can you blame her? Because it was absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Let's take another shot outside, though. This is going to be the Fox 4 Tower Cam. It gives you a live look right over the Cape Coral area. Beautiful this morning. A couple more clouds compared to what we saw yesterday, but we really can't complain today. And if you haven't taken a step outside, hint, hint, we are feeling less humidity, which is making it feel pretty refreshing out there after we have a front move through. Now it was a cold front, not going to cool us down, but it will make a difference humidity wise. Current temperatures 66 over in LaBelle, 67 in Fort Myers, 68 in Bonita Springs, and the same down in Naples. And when you take a look at that humidity on the muggy meter, you can see it goes boop, 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 all the way down to the tolerable levels. Some areas not even at a dew point of 60 yet. So that's going to make it feel fantastic today. We're also nice and clear. Live radar sweeping across nice and beautiful, not just for us and not picking up any rain for us here in Southwest Florida, but really all of the entire Gulf. We do have an area of high pressure building into the north of us. That front we saw yesterday stalled right over the Florida Keys. And I know I said it's going to be beautiful. We're going to have less humidity, still going to be a hot one. Plenty of sunshine you could see on the 24 hour forecast that average high for this time of the year, 89. We'll be close to that. Some areas a little bit warmer. We're forecasting a high closer to 94 today. Not going to see much rain today, but take a look at the forecast because as we move through, things do change a little bit for your mother. Day. So today, beautiful. If you want to sit outside, have any lunch, you could see through the afternoon and evening hours, really not much changing here. Sunday, we see a slight shift in the winds. That's going to push a little bit more moisture closer to us. A lot of that going to stay inland. Some coastal communities could see a straight shower or two. That's going to be later on in the afternoon, early evening hours. So maybe take mom out for brunch. That would be your best bet. The earlier, the better. You'll beat the humidity and also any of that rain. Today, if you want to head out on the boat, I know that's what we have planned for today. Your marine forecast looking fantastic. The wind very light out of the north northeast. Seas two feet or less. Light chop on the inland water. Do not forget the SPF though. We do have another chance for rain in the forecast with another cold front. I'll tell you later on in the week. Let me walk you through it. So for today, mostly sunny, hot, a high of 90 degrees tomorrow. Remember, we have a chance for a storm inland, still going to be a warm one with a high maxing out near 90. Those isolated inland storms do continue through the rest of your work week. It's just that time of the year with the heat and the sea breeze, all that combined going to give us those storms. And then we do have a chance for scattered storms on Thursday associated with another cold front. Again, don't expect that to cool you down much but we are at a deficit when it comes to rainfall. So fingers crossed we could really use that rain. Rochelle. All right, thanks, Lauren. Divorce attorneys are getting busy as the pandemic slows down. Why they say lockdowns are behind the spike in couples calling it quits. 
Welcome back. As the pandemic slows down across the nation, some attorneys and marriage counselors say they expect to see a rise in gray divorces. Fox's Jessica Formoso explains what that means. After almost three decades of marriage, Bill and Melinda Gates have decided to end their relationship. Their type of divorce has a name, gray divorce, which simply means a split after age 50. I will say, I think those marriages were already having their issues. It's not like they were so happy right before and then all of a sudden they decided. Divorce among middle-aged couples are on the rise. Data shows more than one in four people over the age of 50 are calling it quits. Jennifer Zucker is the co-founder of Project Soulmate. In business, I just see a lot more people coming to us that are separated, that are older and are not even divorced yet. And this is the population that we're talking about right now. She says the pandemic has a lot to do with it. Couples spending more time together and realizing the relationship is not what it used to be. I think what's happened also for the past years, people just realize like life is too short, you know, and to live a life the rest of your years unhappy, why? Experts say by the age of 50, many experience major life transitions, like becoming empty nesters. Now, for the first time since before they had children, the couple are by themselves again. And they are forced to confront each other and look at each other in a new and different way. Dr. Jephtha Tauzik, a clinical psychologist, says couples can grow apart over the years. People tend to be healthier now. Uh, well into middle age than before. And they're now looking at the next portion of their lives in a different way. All right, this time last year, people were foregoing the salon and giving themselves those quarantine haircuts. Now, despite vaccines and a drop in cases, some people are still hesitant to get their hair cut by a professional. The new policies at some salons to make people feel comfortable coming up. Live from the station that's in your corner, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. Welcome back. Barbers and stylists were some of the first people to return to work after the quarantine, but more than a year later, many people still aren't comfortable sitting down in their chairs. And as Chris Conti shows us, some stylists are also having lingering concerns about their own health. How have you been feeling, okay? <laughs> like the end of the scissors she cuts with, Shelly Abro likes to get straight to the point. So tell me, am I just giving you a clean up today? We first met Shelly in 2020. She'd been struggling to stay afloat during COVID-19. We were open seven days a week down to five. So this small business owner decided to think outside the box. No cords. Which led her literally outside. So how's your day going, Tom? Gents Barbershop joined many across the country in offering clients outdoor haircuts. When I saw this picture, I was like, that's it. I got to do this outside thing for those people like me who are nervous to go inside. Right. These days, there's still a lot of demand for those outdoor haircuts. There's still a lot of people that are very, very nervous to come inside. Only problem is, Shelly hasn't been feeling like herself lately. Um, I wanted to do my outside barbershop, but I need to wait until I get some energy back. In the middle of the pandemic, when this 48-year-old thought COVID was the only thing she had to be worried about. When is it going to end, huh? She was hit with this news. On December 2nd, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Like so many other Americans, this small business owner has had no other choice but to show up for work every day. She can't get her COVID vaccine because of the chemo. But she also can't stop working. My immune system is junk. What are you going to do? You can't just stay at home and lock yourself in the house. Nearly 15 months into this pandemic, there are still clients coming here to get their first post-quarantine haircut. People have been coming back in um, who I haven't seen in more than a year <laughs> with hair. You know, I have to cut about six inches off. And Shelly gets it. With a compromised immune system, she understands why so many people are still afraid to leave the house. Many states, including New Hampshire, where Gents Barbershop is located, have dropped their mask mandates. 
putting workers like Shelly potentially at risk. I don't go anywhere. I still haven't eaten inside a restaurant. Just very careful. Without those outdoor haircuts, Shelly is doing whatever she can to accommodate clients. She's staying late so families can come in alone, even schedules a few extra minutes just to keep people company. That's not good for them to be isolated like that, so we'll spend, you know, 10, 15 minutes extra with them. Like a good haircut, Shelly Albro is ready for COVID-19 to fade away. You can't stress about stuff you can't control. Until then, she'll be here giving her customers. Let's clean you up. Much more than a cut. We'll get through this, right? I'm Chris Conti. And some biz Florida business owners, excuse me, say the governor's repeal of local mask mandates is putting pressure on them to stop asking customers to wear face coverings. The owner of a tea shop in Tampa says she's had to put out a sign reminding customers to treat employees with respect after she says workers were harassed and yelled at over the store's mask policy. She says people became more aggressive after the governor's announcement this week, and it got so bad one employee quit on the spot in the middle of her shift. I've actually fielded quite a few phone calls in the last couple of days from employees that are tearful over the way they've been spoken to. Um, they've been called names, they've been threatened, and they're pretty upset about it. They don't deserve that. The restaurant and food service industry has seen a nationwide shortage of workers as those businesses try to rebound from the pandemic. Pfizer is officially requesting full FDA approval for its COVID vaccine. Pfizer, Moderna and other drug makers are allowed to distribute their vaccines right now under emergency use approval. But now Pfizer will likely be the first to receive full approval. For the next few weeks, the company will submit a variety of data to the FDA. Pfizer has also asked for priority review, which means a decision could come within six months instead of 10. Japan is looking to extend a state of emergency in several areas three months before the start of the Olympics. The extensions are set for the city of Tokyo, where the games will be held, as well as three other areas. This is in an effort to curb a recent surge of coronavirus cases. The state of emergency will be extended until May 31st. The games were originally set to take place last year, but they were postponed due to the pandemic. Several people gathered at the Islamic Center of Southwest Florida Friday to honor Ramadan. The center was unable to host prayers last year due to the pandemic, but this year they made some changes to keep everyone safe. Organizers tell us they're practicing social distancing and have options available for both indoor and outdoor services. The minister of the center says members of the community will also be getting vaccinated. We can't eat and we can't drink, but shots, that's uh, not eatable ones. Excellent. And that's necessary and for health guidelines. And sometimes we have nothing but to use uh, emergency exit. <laughs> Service leaders also say that they're honoring the event in different shifts to limit the number of people on site. And they say anyone is welcome to come to services. All right, y'all know how I feel about this view. I talked about it earlier and we're back at it again with a live look at Naples Pier. You can tell the sun is coming up. It's getting brighter. We saw a few people walking on the pier. They've got the right idea. You know how <laughs> I feel, Lauren. I love this view. I love going out there. So let's talk about it, right? You said yeah. that today's a better day to be outside. So those folks have the right idea. Tomorrow's Mother's Day. I'm planning a, you know, a surprise for my mom. It's outside. The question is, should I have a backup plan? What time are you going to do it? <laughs> it's the morning, like 9, 10 o'clock. Oh, you're good. Okay, yes, the earlier the better tomorrow. <laughs> we do have a slight chance for an isolated storm that's mainly going to impact our inland areas. We'll talk more about that in your full forecast in just a few minutes. But we had a cold front move through yesterday. What a difference it feels like this morning. Didn't really expect too much of a cool down, but the 24-hour temperature change is enough for me to smile and also for Rochelle to give me two thumbs up. Naples, where we just showed you 11 degrees cooler right now than where we were this time yesterday morning. Let's take a little temperature tour really quickly. Uh, live radar looking nice and clear, so no complaints there. Temperature wise, we're looking fantastic. This is over in Charlotte County coming in at 60 over in Punta Gorda, taking a look at Lee County, 68 at Whiskey Creek, so a little bit warmer and then headed down to the Collier County area, 67 over in Golden Gate. Today's going to be another hot one, though. I know I said cold front, but don't expect it to cool you down too much a high today closer to 90 degrees like I said today mostly dry sunny but rain chances go up tomorrow we'll talk more about that stick around 
All right, thanks, Lauren. It's now going to be harder for voters to change our state constitution. That's because Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a bill that limits the amount of money someone can spend to promote ballot initiatives to just $3,000. If their cause actually makes it onto the ballot, they are allowed to spend more. Republicans say the law will keep out-of-state special interest money from influencing the state constitution, while Democrats call it a blatant attempt by the GOP to squash voters' rights to implement policies that Republicans refuse to consider. With vaccines now widely available, Florida's capital reopened its doors to the public yesterday morning. Officials shut the building down 14 months ago as the pandemic began in 2020. With weekly testing, access was mostly limited to lawmakers, staff and press. While lawmakers say precautions were necessary, some worry democracy suffered because of constraints on public testimony. Minority advocacy groups like Florida Rising say this allowed for easier approval of controversial policy a wish list of special interest, of the far right, uh, just being steamrolled through this process. And even when folks came to have their voices heard, testimony was limited. The GOP majority, however, has a different take on things. Republicans celebrated it as effective and efficient given the circumstances, and they say they were able to pass major bills. Public testimony will return when the lawmakers do. A special gaming session is set for May 17th. Dry wood termite season is here and the insects are swarming for their next meal. With Mother's Day being right around the corner, termites are probably not the gift moms are looking for. Look at the video, it's pretty gross. However, experts say these bugs are popping up all across Southwest Florida looking for a new home and that could potentially be yours. Anna Wallace with Truly Nolan Pest Control tells Fox 4 it's important to start preventative measures right away because these termites could cost you thousands of dollars in damages to your home. Uh, and so there are products that can be treated on the wood in order to prevent termites from, you know, getting into the wood. And then even if they do, they'll die from eating the treatment afterwards. And for more information about dry wood termites and how to keep them out of your home, be sure to visit our website, foxfornow.com. Toilet paper. A year ago, the problem was you couldn't find it. Now the problem is the price, which is currently spiking. Industry experts say you'll be paying more for those rolls because the material toilet paper is made from, wood pulp, is getting more expensive. One industry analyst says the monthly pulp price increases we're seeing are unprecedented in his experience. Those prices are rising for a variety of reasons, including global shipping delays and a post-COVID recovery in China, which is the world's biggest pulp buyer. Fighting hunger, the Edison Mall and American Legion Post 38 are joining forces to keep Southwest Florida fed. They're holding a canned food drive in Suite 1480 across from JCPenney in the Edison Mall from May 15th to the 31st. The goal is to fill all 1,591 square feet of the suite with canned goods and non-perishable food, so you're asked to donate what you can. And if you need food today, the Harry Chapin Food Bank is holding a mobile food pantry from 10 a.m. to noon at Harnes Marsh Middle School in Lehigh Acres. All right, putting some yummy in your tummy. Fox 4 is on a mission to find the best comfort food in Southwest Florida. Coming up, we're taking you into the kitchen of a family business with some big flavor. Lauren? All right, Southwest Florida, I don't know about you, but my plan is to take mom to the beach. So we're talking not about just your Saturday forecast, but also your Mother's Day forecast for tomorrow coming up in just a few minutes. Stick around. You're watching Fox 4 Morning News. At Fox 4, we ask questions about what's going on in our community every day. But we know you've got questions, too. Whether it's an issue you've observed, like what are city leaders doing to fix homelessness in our community? or a problem you're facing, like can my employer still make me wear a mask inside of my workplace? Or maybe you're just curious, like what are they building over there? Keeping you informed and getting answers to your questions is important to us. That's why we're launching Ask Fox 4. Send a video or message with your question on Facebook. Send us an email at news at fox4now.com or just go to our website, fox4now.com slash ask. Just tell us what you want to know and we'll work to get you answers. 
now. Welcome back. Time now is 6.44 a.m. You're taking a look at the tower cam just outside of the Fox 4 studios. You're looking at Pine Island Road. Just a beautiful start to the morning. You can see a few people out there on the roads. We're going to check in with Lauren in just a bit to see what our overall Mother's Day weekend forecast will be like and if it'll stay this beautiful for the rest of the weekend. Well, food is something so many of us can relate to and find joy in, especially while we were stuck at home over the past year. So our Amy Wegman is making it her mission to find the best comfort food here in Southwest Florida, one restaurant at a time. Today, she's showing you the little slice of Jamaican taste she found in Fort Myers. Can you hear it? The sweet so sizzle of, of delicious yeah, Caribbean yeah, flavors at IREI in Fort Myers. For Chef Andrew Henry, his family business is big on flavor. My wife always said, you better make sure you got that meat marinated. So when you marinate the meat, it's actually the, the flavor seeps in overnight. Henry's been whipping up island favorites on Fowler Avenue in Fort Myers for a little over two years now. He's been in the kitchen since he was a kid, learning from his mom, and he remembers the first time in front of the stove. The first time, the first time uh, it would be like making eggs. <laughs> Making a scramble egg or a fry egg, you know. And now look at you. Yes. Running your own restaurant. Oxtail, curried goat, all kinds of seafood line the menu at IREI. Henry's favorite? Escovitch fish or brown stroke fish yeah. with steamed vegetables. Today, though, he's cooking up aki and salt fish. It's a type of vegetable and salted codfish served at breakfast time. Tomato, onion, thyme, and pepper. Also on the menu, curry shrimp. This is uh, actually curry powder. Mmm, I love curry. He truly offers something for everyone, including vegan dishes. But no matter what you decide to eat at IREI, you can feel and taste the love. It does remind me of, of joy. <laughs> when people eat food or being with um, loved ones and so forth, it's a time of togetherness. So you actually bring people together, and that's one of the most important things for me. I could not leave without trying one of those curry shrimp, if only you could smell it. Mmm, oh my gosh. That is so good. You've really got to try this hidden gem. At Irie, you come and you have a good time. And some seriously good food. All right, and if you have a spot right here in Southwest Florida that you want Amy to know about, you can send her an email at amy.wegman at fox4now.com. And we want to thank reporter Rachel Lloyd and evening anchor Shari Armstrong for suggesting this place. Let's just say the owner knew them by name and knew what they like to order. The National Retail Federation says Mother's Day spending is expected to total $28 billion. That's up more than $1 billion from 2020. According to the group's annual survey, consumers are planning to spend an average of $220. Mother's Day could be the comeback holiday for restaurants recovering from COVID-19. Nation's Restaurant News says multiple chains will be offering both to-go and dine-in options. An open table says Mother's Day restaurant reservations are up 64% compared to 2019 and are nine times higher than last year. Mother's Day is tomorrow, and to make sure moms in our area are truly supported, the community is working to give them supplies and services they need to keep their kids healthy. More than 100 moms have already signed up for a big Mother's Day celebration taking place inside of Grace Church today. It's a partnership between several local groups. There'll be baby supplies, gifts, food, and all of it will be free. And that's not all. They will have a chance to win some great prizes. If a woman doesn't have a safe place for the baby to sleep that they're expecting, we have pack and plays available along with the education. We have car seats with also education for them to learn how to properly install it. This is what we call a choice food pantry where you don't just get a bag of food. You get to go around and choose the things that your family would enjoy. If you're planning on bringing the little ones, there will also be an animal show. And Grace Church says there'll also be a clothing exchange. We've got all the details on the story on fox4now.com. All right, moms, you can cool off this weekend at the Sun Splash Family Water Park. Admission is free for moms with the purchase of a child or teen ticket. The park will be open from 10 in the morning until 5 in the evening. Tomorrow will be the first family slide night of the season, and that'll take place from 5 to 8.30 in the evening.
All right, a heads up, if you plan to spend Mother's Day at the beach, you might want to make some other plans. The Florida Department of Health in Lee County has issued red tide warnings for Lynn Hall Beach Park, Lover's Key State Park, and Bonita Springs Beach Park. If you have chronic respiratory issues, you are urged to stay away from these areas, and you should also avoid swimming in areas with dead fish. All right, Lauren, so the beach might be looking a little bit iffy, depending on which beaches you were planning to go to for Mother's Day, but the weather overall still good, right? Oh, absolutely. I would say today, probably a better beach day just because that humidity is way down. So it's going to feel so good out there. And because of that humidity being down, we can thank that cold front that moved through yesterday <laughs> really didn't uh, cool us down too much, but I have to say that humidity is down and we have quite the temperature spread for this morning. Taking a live look at the Rubenstein Law Sky Cam, this is Fort Myers Beach. This is where I'll be today. I can promise that, especially with a welcoming look like this first thing on a Saturday morning. Those colors are absolutely fantastic. You really can't complain in Southwest Florida when you wake up to something looking like this. All right, I was talking about that temperature spread, so let's take a look at the current temperatures because we have a couple of spots that have 50s on the map. So 58 in Arcadia, 66 in Immokalee, 70 down in Marco Island. And I told you we are quite the spread there. Live radar looking nice and clear. That live look showed you we're not seeing any rain out there, and that's all thanks to an area of high pressure building in and that front we saw yesterday stalled right over the of Florida Strait. So they're dealing with that at the moment. A couple of showers for them for today, but not for us today. However, things do change on Mother's Day. We do have a chance for an isolated storm that would be tomorrow and mostly for our inland areas. So let's take a look at our models here. So this is for today. Not much of a change through the morning into the afternoon. A couple of showers way down in the Florida Straits and then things stay clear even through this evening. Taking a closer look at tomorrow though, you can start to see a shift in the wind and between that humidity and that sea breeze, we start to see a stray shower or two kind of popping up. Maybe even an isolated storm for our inland areas that continues through the afternoon, early evening hours with things mostly clearing out for the overnight hours into Monday. But you can expect more of those isolated storms to stick around for the beginning of your work week. This is all thanks to that sea breeze and also the humidity. So even though it feels refreshing for today, as we go through the rest of the week, we're going to feel an uptick in our dew points. It's going to make it feel a little more muggy out there. Still going to be a hot one for today and also for your Mother's Day. Highs rising close to 90 degrees under plenty of sunshine. Pretty on par with that average high of 89 that we typically see for this time of the year. So we talked about the beach already, but what about the boat? Not a bad marine forecast either the wind coming out of the northeast at about 10 knots seas two to three feet and a moderate chomp on the inland water you can expect more of that for tomorrow as well so let me walk you through the seven day forecast because we do have some rain in the forecast and then another front on the way so for today going to be sunny hot high of 90 tomorrow you can expect more of that but don't forget an isolated chance for those late inland storms monday tuesday wednesday it's much of the same but our highs upticking just a little bit in the low 90s. Thursday, we do have scattered storms and showers. That's going to be associated to another cold front arriving, and we could definitely use a dent in the drought that we are dealing with at the moment. The drought monitor not looking too hot, so hopefully that rainfall will help all of us. Rochelle. All right, thanks, Lauren. And Fox 4 is looking for paradise heroes in southwest Florida. If you know of anybody who's going above and beyond to protect our paradise, go to the Fox 4 Fort Myers Facebook page and share their story with us. You can also send their information to news at fox4now.com. And remember, anytime your phone is out, you can check us out on social media. Just search for the Fox 4 Now on Instagram and Twitter. And on Facebook, look for, look for Fox 4 Now Fort Myers. Stick with us. Welcome back. A massive 101 carat diamond will be up for auction in Geneva later this month. The diamond named Alrosa Spectacle was mined in Russia over a decade ago and is expected to fetch millions at the Christie's house auction. A rep for Christie says the diamond took more than a year to cut and is regarded as a top of the line stone. The auction is scheduled to take place on May 12th. If you buy that diamond, <laughs> you want to hook a sister up, you know, give me the diamond. I'm down. I'll be doing some the strength training to make you sure I'm need ready it. for it. <laughs> you would definitely need it. Hot take though. Um, I thought it was going to be bigger when we were talking about this during the commercial break. <laughs> 
It's a little smaller than expected, but still, I'll take it. I'm, I'm not complaining. If you want to give it to me, you guys, I'm down. Here's my phone. While I give the forecast, do you want to call my husband? And we can take turns wearing it. David, buy the diamond. <laughs> yes. Hopefully, you got something beautiful, maybe something sparkly for mom tomorrow, Mother's Day. A gorgeous forecast, but we do have a chance for an isolated storm. So just keep your eye to the sky for tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye.